Now, this course is all about uh, learning uh, a discipline to deal with your day, to deal with the day you have to live. In that respect, it uh, is uh, both a combination of meditation techniques and a practical philosophy. Um, in the course, you are going to learn uh, different meditation techniques, meditation techniques that have been uh, scientifically studied and there is enough evidence about their beneficial effects, which I'm not going to entertain telling you them because you know you have them in the internet in every place, so I don't need to tell you. They have by themselves as techniques uh, a lot of beneficial effects, but the goal of uh, implementing a discipline in your life, because you know meditating, uh, learning to meditate, is learning a discipline that you are going to follow. It's like going to the gym. You know, you don't learn, you go, you learn to do certain exercises to practice them, not to learn them and not practice them. It makes no sense, you know? Uh, so the sense is implementing a discipline in your life, which is a discipline uh, to deal with what is something quite obvious, which is that uh, the only day you have to live, the only day you can do something that is good for you or for your life or for the life of your loved ones is today. Because yesterday, whatever you did, it's already done. And yesterday is only memories in your mind and your yesterday and my yesterday and everybody else's yesterday, even if they live with you and they are your husband, or, is not the same yesterday because you know there is not a shared yesterday. So yesterday is just a projection in our minds, not a reality for that respect. So you will have probably uh, heard many, many times that uh, mindfulness, meditation, one of the main things is learning to live in the moment, in the here and now, you know, being present, mindful in the here and now, without judging what happens, which really means uh, that it's an attitude, is part of the practical philosophy because it is an attitude that basically uh, helps you uh, unfold or develop the observer, the part in you which is conscious, which is observing or is witness of the existence that you are experiencing. Now, the existence we all experience and that you experience is based uh, on because you have the idea that your existence is kind of a continuum, uh, but in reality is as much a continuum as a film is a continuum. You see a film and you see the horse moving, but they are like pictures after pictures that you know when you pass them, it looks like the horse is moving. Your life is like pictures after pictures of this kind, because your life is, the picture is when you wake up every morning. When you wake up every morning, you picture yourself in your mind, which is you project in the screen of your mind, uh, your memories of your circumstances, uh, the things uh, you tell yourself about life, uh, the things you tell yourself about yourself, the people that are part of your circumstances that day, which different days have been different people throughout time, no? So you wake up to that, uh, uh, to, to that projection in the screen of your mind, which you only know, uh, because nobody else knows that, but you, what you project in the screen of your mind, uh, that 
nobody cares what you project in, in the screen of your mind because everybody cares only about what they project in the screen of their minds. And we call that our reality, but that is a reality that we are only aware of. Uh, it's not a shared reality in any case. Um, and it has nothing to do with what we could call the actuality, which is the only reality that we share, which is the day we have to live in which we interactuate with each other, enter into relationships and, you know, and, and experience existence. So, uh, you know, if you look at your life, you know, the projections your mind did when you were 15 years old and when you were 25 and when you were 35 have been changing throughout time. And those are kind of the, the photograms of the film. And you think it's a continuous thing, but it's a series of days that create the idea that there is some kind of continuity in that film. Uh, so, you know, the experience of existence that each of the human beings that we all are have is based on this experience we have of our waking state of the mind. Because we could say, or we could assume, or we in fact assume, that when we are sleeping, we are not in charge. We it's kind of nature is in charge. So you go to sleep and you disappear. In fact, you sleep well when you disappear completely. If you keep appearing all night, you don't sleep well. So sleeping is that part in which you are not in charge. And the part of the experience that you relate with as the experience of your existence is that part in which you are in the waking state of the mind and you have the experience of being in charge of your actions, I do, of your thoughts, I think, and of your feelings, I feel. So during one day, you, the I will be thinking things, feeling things, and doing things during all day. And that is the I you experience each day. So in this course, we are going to learn a discipline to deal with a day, to deal with that which is the existence, uh, your ex the experience, the subjective experience of existence. And we are going to learn certain meditation techniques, which is basically Meditation techniques are like um, a, a gym for the mind, for the capabilities of our minds. Uh, imagine the mind as a muscle. So in the same way that you train physical muscles, you want to train uh, the mind muscle. And uh, you know, uh, you want to be able to be concentrated. Uh, you, be, you want to be able to be one-pointed because, you know, a concentrated mind can achieve anything. I always put an example. You might be not very intelligent, but if you concentrate, you get a grade. You can be very intelligent, but you don't concentrate, you don't get a grade. And there are many, many examples. <laughs> so uh, uh, concentration is something which is practical and you're going to learn techniques that will unfold the natural capa cap capacity or competence of, of the brain to be one-pointed, one to be focused. Uh, you are going to learn uh, techniques that will help you connect with your inner feelings, with kind of the, your inner vibration, the, the, the depth of your being uh, uh, that will allow you, uh, you know, it is a common experience because for that respect, 
everybody, every human being somehow has been in a meditative state in, in some moment, no? For example, you know, watching a fireplace, you know, feeling completely at peace and listening to the creeping of the fireplace and just flowing into that experience. That's a meditative state or contemplative state of the mind, no? And that is a common experience. So what you are going to learn is techniques that, you know, something which is a common ability of the mind, uh, but that are designed to unfold that ability. You know, like, for example, the, it's a common ability to run, but if you learn how to run properly, well, you will run better. So the techniques that you are going to learn basically are going to unfold certain basic capabilities of your mind. Uh, and you are going to learn breathing techniques. You are going to learn techniques uh, that connect you with your body so that you can feel your body and be in, in connection with your body. You are going to learn techniques to focus the mind, to, to create one pointedness of the mind. And you are going to learn introspective techniques to be to learn to be in touch with yourself, with your inner self. So that's the part of the techniques. And then you are going to learn techniques to deal each day with your actions, with your thoughts, and with your feelings. Because as the only day you, we have, not you, but we, that we have to make any better of our lives or whatever it is today, and the, the I experiences itself through its actions because you are known not because of what you think, but because of your actions, because nobody knows what you think, but we all know what you do. <laughs> so uh, mm, through learning how to deal with your actions uh, and everything that implies acting, mindfully how to deal with your thoughts learning thoughts is the most uh, troublesome part of our little uh, eyes which is what we project in the screen of our minds and you are going to learn a little bit how does the mind work how the word do thoughts originate and what kind of different thoughts are there uh, because you know you have when when the mind is in creative mode uh, like you are planifying something or you know or painting or writing a poetry the mind doesn't trouble you when you are in a contemplative state is the same when you are contemplating a sunset or a sundown or a poem or an opera or an idea when the mind or you are studying when when the mind is flowing in a continuous way in one subject the mind doesn't bother doesn't trouble uh, the, you have the meditative state of the mind, which is what you are going to learn with the meditation techniques, and the mind doesn't trouble there also. And where the mind troubles is with the inner chatter of the mind, which is the uh, what the neuroscience calls the default mode networking. Uh, which is the default state, like the computers, the default state of the mind is that one. So unless you voluntarily put your mind in creative state, it will be in the inner chatter state, which is, you know, you are thinking about your family and then you are speaking mentally with your mother or your son or, and so on and so forth with your work and so on and so forth. So this mind chatter, which is kind of noise, it's full of BS, if you want to put it in simple natural terms, uh, because there is no good content there. It's not wisdom thoughts. And you are going to learn how 
do those thoughts originate, how they condition your behavior, how they make you suffer, how they convert the natural feeling of the heart, which is love, into the different emotions. And you will learn practical techniques to deal with your thought processes during one day. And finally, is what you feel from the moment you wake up, you are feeling something. You can be, feel, you can be feeling happy, anxious, uh, frustrated, or whatever, but you are feeling something. In the course, we are going to learn how we can uh, bring that feeling to the king. Let's put it like that, to the king of all feelings, which is love or compassion, as the Buddhists would say, which is when you wake up feeling love and you carry on all your day with that feeling, then it's very easy to carry on with your day. So although there are not rules uh, uh, for love, uh, we will explore avenues so that uh, you know this connection with this uh, deep feeling which is there in the depth of the heart of every human being and of every child and, and, and of every born baby to his mother or kitten to his mother cat because it's part of nature uh, to connect with that energy is also one of the components of this course. So this course will contain uh, the techniques, the practical philosophy, and the understandings, the, the concepts and the understandings required uh, to implement in your life the discipline of, of meditation and we could say spiritual practices, if we call spiritual practices, how you deal with these three areas of thought, actions, and feelings. And that will be the content of the course. And now, you know, whatever you want to ask me, that, uh, you know, um, the course is going to speak about things that are very obvious in the sense that it's like you don't have to, to tell anyone that that carpet is white because they can see it, it's white, you know? Uh, so things that are very obvious. So the practical philosophy, the explanation, for example, of how the mind works, is going to be based on things that you as a human being or any human being without, with or without the studying psychology is going to understand because it's an obvious thing. You only have one day, for example. You know, you cannot argue. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but you cannot argue. Mm -hmm. Your life is just this day with respect of the I that you are perceiving yourself to be because that I is existing now in no other place. In the yesterday in your mind, there is it's non-existent for me or for anybody, or you know. So all the all everything that I'm going to teach you in this course, uh, you know, blends perfectly with science, with scientific. Uh, I myself have a scientific background in theoretical physics, so just imagine. <laughs> So mathematics, so uh, I am of a scientific background mind. I have published uh, scientific uh, uh, articles in, 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 in prestigious magazines when I was young, you know, when I did my thesis and things like that, not, not, any lo not anymore. But you know, I, I understand that and I, you will not find contradictions neither things that are not obvious, you know, like, for example, I will put you an example when I'm explaining the conditioning of the mind, why we are conditioning to behave in one way, I explain it in a way that it's obvious to everyone, which is, for example, in my case, in my case, 
I was born, was born in Madrid. Do you like soccer? A little bit, yes. Good. You know, Real Madrid exists, right? Of course, okay. yes. I was born in Madrid. My father is from Real Madrid. I was taken as a young boy to Real Madrid Stadium. So today, without being able to avoid it, if Real Madrid wins Barcelona, <laughs> I get happy. And I cannot tell myself, don't get happy tomorrow. Tomorrow you are going to be happy of Barcelona winning. It's not possible mm -hmm. because I am conditioned to behave through a previous patterning that I have in my mind. Mm -hmm. The question is how that patterning affect, affects me. I cannot change the patterning, so I cannot change <laughs> that that pattern is happening in me. But, you know, I can either get depressed after Real Madrid wins because I identify myself with the patterning, or I can observe the patterning and realize that in reality, I am not the patterning. I am the experiencer of the patterning. So it is an obvious thing. You don't need to be a psychologist. You just need to understand that, you know, supporters of the Yankees get happy. <laughs> when Yankees win and it's not their will, they are conditioned yeah. by their parents, their education, their, you name it, you know. Yes. So it's all going, it's all going to be like that, you know, obvious okay. things that many times because of they are, because they are obvious, uh, we don't put our attention in them. That's the secret of illusionism, you know, with the cards, it's mm -hmm. always the obvious things but you never put attention in the obvious. <laughs> yeah. So we complicate yeah. things, but it's going to be all things that you said, it's true. I mean, how could I have not thought about this? Okay. I have another, thank you for that. Um, I have another question um, hmm. in terms of the course, um, how many hours does it demand from us? Like, are there readings, are there practices or um, uh, how much involvement would I need to put into the week? Uh, the involvement that you have to put into the week basically will be doing your practices. You could go through the material that is there as documents for you to read through, but I'm going to give all the information orally also. So you have the documented support, but the information is going to be orally. The practices, you are going to learn them during the classes themselves. And then you will have to practice them during the week to make some sense of the course. The practices start with, you know, we start little by little with kind of five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, and we gradually go up until we get to 15, 20 minutes in the morning, 15, 20 minutes in the evening with respect to what it would be a formal meditation techniques to use the same uh, language as MBSR, for example. Uh, and then during the day, you know, like the informal, to use the same language practices that have to deal with thoughts, feelings, and actions. Uh, you know, for each week, you will, you will work on some aspect of one of the things that they uh, have been studied okay. in, in the class. Okay, that's quite clear. Thank you so much. I don't think I have any other questions for now. Thank you. Good, Catherine. So anyhow, so um, that's all I can say, really. Uh, so very nice to meet you, and I hope you have a very nice evening. You too. Thank you. And thank you to everybody. Bye. Namaste. Bye.